Eme Fusa Tele Kiuchumi. That is what we have on Mona Inchi in Tanzania. In Rwanda, fine insurance dropped 17% as COVID-19 takes its toll. Rwanda UAE eye deeper ties in new corporation deal. Somalia looks forward to joining supporting EAC initiatives. Uh, that is what an envoy is talking about. You can read all the details there instead of the New Times if you're waking up in Rwanda. The East African this week is holding this flash for us. Airbus, Boeing, Vi for Uganda orders, the European and US firms executives have been camping in Kampala to pitch sales of the narrow body planes as carrier prepares to service international rounds like London and Dubai. Congo, Uhuru balancing act. Some say he's on M23's side, others say he's in Shisekedi's she, she pocket. Ruto allies want him recalled. Will he deliver? That is a problem question. And 36 AU summit, another round of broken promises. That is a problem question. We have the editorial cartoon. This is where now we want just to buckle down to a discussion as well, uh, beginning with you. Irungu Hilton, looking at that, this is Natembea taking the bull by the horns uh, on the banditry issue as well. He's spoken quite uh, uh, clearly regarding the bandits and uh, how they're even more suave than the Al Shabaab. But looking at that editorial, taking it by the horns, the banditry, Natembea, when he was the regional commissioner mm -hmm. and now he's the governor of Transoya, mm -hmm. and people, he's actually the first spot of call, you know, with comments to do with. Uh, this particular move by the government to deploy KDF. Let's just buckle down to that discussion with you, beginning with you. I think the context obviously is, is relatively clear. I mean, over 100 dead, um, many, many people displaced, um, <coughs> and the action by the uh, Ministry of Interior um, on Monday night essentially um, placed six counties under national emergency and um, started the process, initiated the process of the uh, parliamentary approval for KDF deployment and I think that's the the broader context I think for us there have been a couple of concerns of course the first one starts with the um, the, the the violence and the lack of peace in that area um, but also I think as I mentioned earlier it is also related to the um, financial distress and the just the sheer hopelessness that people have at the moment um, in many parts of the country I think we were concerned that uh, the deployment was happening without parliamentary approval. Of course, there is a concern that we raised in this panel, I think, with regards to the DRC a few weeks back. But it is clear that um, Honorable Nelson <coughs> Koyak, um, excuse me, uh, I think was in the papers, in the papers today saying that they, it's an active matter before the parliament and that they have given approval or they're on the verge of giving approval. Um, I just hope that in the next uh, day, 24 hours, we see some result um, against the three-day amnesty for the weapons um, that um, uh, the government has demanded uh, be released, you know, uh, be given up to the government. The third thing, I think, is really around the issue of um, uh, oversight. Uh, the operation needs to be oversighted clearly. And one of the challenges when you have KDF deployment in a civilian population is that you do not have the oversight of the Independent Policing Oversight Authority and uh, potentially also the Kenya National Commission for Human Rights. But I think in this particular case, it's very clear that the KDF are supplementing or supporting the National Police Service. And therefore, um, in that regard, it will come, it will fall very squarely under the uh, mandate of the Independent Policing Oversight Authority. So some of the, yeah, I guess, some of the concerns that are already coming through in the press in terms of people moving from the uh, areas that will be, um, will see deployment. Um, perhaps there is some, uh, I guess there is some uh, relief in the sense that they will be these two agencies overseeing the process. So I think this, this would be my initial comments. Okay. Right. Well, the ball, you know, the meat that we eat in the butcheries uh, in Nairobi, in uh, the major cities of uh, Kenya, uh, under a cartel, the ball, the, uh, the people, people rustle because they sell this uh, meat to um, a cartel in uh, the big cities or the big towns in, uh, in, in Kenya. Uh, Dabal, I think you've interviewed me before, where we had one day in, somewhere in Turkana County where over 50 police officers were killed. <coughs> um, and Dabal, I think that uh, unless you get to the bottom of these cartels and the meat cartels in this country, it will be very difficult to deal with the rustling uh, because of the supply chain issue. Uh, second of all, I don't think the ball that uh, 
when there was mudslides in Pokot and rain and all these people were feeling all these uh, kinds of misery, there was no call up of the army to go and help uh, residents there. Um, we just can't act in this colonial fashion and you know, just bring up uh, troops every time that there's a security problem. Uh, we have a police system in this country. Uh, we, we should have police action in this country. We have the General Service, Service Unit, which is one of the most heavily armed uh, groups in this country. It's nearly a paramilitary group. Uh, I know that from 2008, uh, as, as my member in the opposite was on the other side, I remember. And uh, I think they have the capacity to deal with this. Uh, I don't think we should get our military out of um, um, their barracks unless there is bridge building, there is mudslides, there is maybe an, some kind of national tragedy that the army needs to go there, the engineering corps needs to go there. Um, of course, there are special forces within the army that are highly trained to deal with um, terrorism and issues like this. And, and maybe they could help in supporting uh, our police in dealing with these bandits because we know they're heavily armed about. You know, everybody in northern Kenya has a gun. A small arms issue is a major issue in northern Kenya. At the, at the end of the day, it is hunger, uh, lack of education and ignorance that are at the bottom of this uh, issue in northern Kenya. And we have a county system in which billions of shillings have been put uh, up in northern Kenya. Uh, the National Assembly should uh, hold the Minister of Defense to account for us, asking us to send the, the army there, but they should also account to how the governors have spent money on social programs and on infrastructure and on issues of water, health and education. And I think that, Debal, if we don't do that, uh, the politicians that we have in this country, Debal, will not be doing their job for the people of this country. So do you think it's just uh, the issue of uh, cartels and, uh, you know, uh, the, selling, the selling of livestock or the, the issue behind the cattle rustling and the banditry uh, that we have in the North Rift is multi-layered, it's cultural as well. Mm. Because some here are saying, even now, as I was reading, uh, uh, Governor Natembe was saying, for some of the caught bandits, even killing of uh, the senior police commander, you know, it, an, it is an mm. honor for them. Uh, it is their culture. So for them, there's the issue of all cattle belong to us, the Maasai. So yeah. this is, is not any, any, any wrongdoing from our end. Mm. So we need a bit of a social re-engineering. It's not just, as I mentioned before, the hard power, mm. but the soft power as well. That should mm. be deployed concurrently. Mm. I, tra I traveled from Eldred to Nairobi with a colleague from South Sudan, uh, who is from a, the core you know, pastoralist community. Mm. And when we reached Muru, we saw some cows graze, grazing on the roadside and he, he was almost in tears that these, these cows are <laughs> suffering from homesick. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had homesick and I asked them where, where, where should they go? They should be in South Sudan. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm familiar with that. But I mean, let, me, let me remind you that uh, I mean, what we don't do in this region, and, and not Kenya generally, the, the whole of the Horn of Africa, is to understand the dynamics <coughs> of, of things here. And they, change, they are changing over time. Um, my professor, the one who supervised my work about 20 or 30 years ago, was Donald Crummy. And he was an expert on the horn. <coughs> and he championed, his work was basically on what he called the primitive bandits. The primitive mm. bandits. Yeah. Uh, the primitive bandits. And uh, he was himself inspired by uh, the British scholar, Eric Hobsbawm who had also uh, uh, spoken about the bandits. For him, he was, uh, you know, inspired by uh, this man, or what was it, the one who was stealing and giving to the poor? Uh, Robin Hood. Ro Ro Robin Hood. Uh, Hobsbawm was inspired by Robin Hood, but Krami was inspired by his experience in Ethiopia mm -hmm. that is actually the bandits who became the emperors. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, th that bandits would shoot themselves their way into power uh, from, uh, from that. Now, here in the North Rift, uh, it is actually the people who are championing banditry who normally get elected. Mm -hmm. And uh, my literal experience with the, with, with the Minister of Interior uh, at that time was that uh, the government had appointed uh, two uh, prominent elders, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the former Speaker of, of, of uh, Parliament, Kapalo, mm -hmm. and the, the colleague from Wajia, mm -hmm. I mean, no, from Garissa, uh, Yusuf Haji. Uh, as people who would 
rush in and deal with these matters. Mm. And they had a budget to that effect to deal with what with the matter because it was not necessarily a, a, a military issue. Mm. Uh, it was not necessarily a cultural issues we're talking about. It was the complex issues. Politicians mm -hmm. manipulating the, the situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, culture coming in at certain time to blow up issues. And, and it was also noticed that uh, the budgets going to counties after 2013 Correct. <coughs> uh, is indicated in record as having built classes yes. and bought bu school buses, yes. but mm -hmm. actually bought uh, roads and roads of arms mm. because for those people the priority is not education mm. priority is not health priority is not water it's security yeah. and security is perceived by how many guns the clan owns so when you talk about surrender yeah. you're using a western model of uh, surrendering guns yeah. you're using a, uh, I mean, uh, a western model <coughs> of individually owned guns mm. here we are talking about communally owned guns that it is us versus them. And I heard it from one of our colleagues from, uh, from uh, KDF at, at some stage in a very private conversation that this group, one was accusing the other, this group, so and so, is helping this. So retired officers mm -hmm. becoming the trainers of the so called bandits. So we're not talking about bandits, and that's where Natembea is a little bit light. I mean, it's, uh, it's somehow uh, correct that we're not just talking about bandits. Mm. We are talking about highly trained people, trained perhaps more than the police officers. Mm. Why? Because there is a whole gamut of people who have retired from different forces and are part of the, the, this corrective. So it's, it's a murky situation. Finally, there is the commercialization of pastoralism. Mm -hmm. uh, in traditional uh, settings, raiding was basically a question of who have more cattle right. uh, to, let, to let the others have. So you go and lead the cattle, people track where the cattle have gone and they wait for two, three, four months. Mm -hmm. Then they come back and raid back the cattle because they know where they went and they have been seeing them. Today, I read today and the next thing, these things are in in Kiamaiko, mm -hmm. they are in, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Dagoretti market mm -hmm. and it's meat. Sometimes they are even slaughtered on their way. You don't, yep. you, you don't know. Mm. So that commercialization, and the, why? Because of tenders. You have tenders in GSU, you have tenders in uh, KDF, police. you have tenders in the police force, you have tenders in, in hotels, you have tenders in uh, private schools, you have tenders. All these people are to eat meat because meat is so central to our diet. So commercialization of raiding is basically the other thing. And finally, we have South Sudan. South Sudan this time is the one changing the balance of power. Among the most powerful people are now the Trukana because they are able to access arms from South Sudan mm -hmm. given the proximity. Prior to that, it was the Pokot because right. they were able to obtain arms from chaotic Uganda before Uganda began to, to stabilize and through the Karamajong. And obviously the Kenya government uh, did support uh, the Kenyan side in order to ensure they are not annihilated by the Karamajong mm -hmm. who are heavily armed. So you had to do something President about it. Is yeah, now we are having Somalia and, and mm. Ethiopia beginning to become increasingly unstable mm. because of the Oromo liberation fronts and all. And therefore, there is a flow of sophisticated arms that our police can never match. Mm. That's why it is wise for the government to deploy the military because it's only the military that can handle some of these sophisticated arms. The, our police are not, uh, guarant I mean, are not uh, by law allowed to, to have some of the arms. Mm. Therefore, we are talking about the tilting balance of power, which we must be very careful about, between various uh, communities that in themselves, by the way, the Trukana it might be seen as an ethnic group. Uh, the Pokot might be seen as ethnic group. The Saburu might be seen as ethnic group. But these are military garrisons. Right. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, these are military garrisons that are very, very well monitored because their survival depends on their military mm -hmm. capacity, not their capacity to produce millet, sorghum, and all these things. Right. All right, thank you. Let's hear from Matt. Uh, what have you been following so far? Uh, do you think it's deeply rooted? Because we've been... We, this is the... It's not the first time we've been actually deploying, <clears throat> not really the KDF, but, uh, you know, police officers down on the ground. We had also the issue of uh, Suguta Valley. We had the issue of Baragoy. That's it, Suguta Valley. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, so I think uh, we should be all the wise on how to deal with, the, with, the, uh, with this menace of banditry. 
but it seems we don't get it right. Well, De Barle, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we're looking at a phenomenon that has its roots in uh, cultures among many communities where cattle rustling used to be an honorable profession in young, among young men, um, but that has become increasingly commercialized, <coughs> and because of its value, it's become politicized. And I think we have to, we really have to be very clear about our voc vocabulary, calling this banditry, mm -hmm. and talking about this in a very amorphous way, as though it is a faceless, nameless crime, is not going to assist the Kenyan state in dealing with it. It's a crime. It is an organized crime. And as my colleague has just told us, there are uh, hierarchies that involve not only the training, but also the profit making, uh, the marketing of livestock uh, that are sold in this region. And there have been innumerable studies by the Kenyan government, by IGAD, by other international organizations. This is an organized crime. And while there may be a need, because of the scale of violence, to deploy the KDF in order to contain the escalation of violence in the region, the real issue is that there is a need for uh, those who are involved from the lower ranks, from the foot soldiers to the uh, commanders of some of these forces, to those who are involved in the commercial side, to be identified, to be named, for evidence to be gathered, for them to be prosecuted in court, and so that from one prosecution to another, evidence snowballs until the kingpins of this organized crime mm -hmm. can be identified, can be prosecuted, and can be held accountable. Mm -hmm. But calling this banditry as though it's some kind of uh, natural uh, emanation mm -hmm. of Kenyan or South Sudanese or other regional cultures is, is no just a way of, yes. of, of, of cleaning, of laundering, what is actually a highly organized activity. Mm -hmm. So this is actually an organized crime. Yes. So we should not be pussyfooting around it with the semantics of banditry mm -hmm. and cattle rustling. It is organized. Uh, let's hear from uh, Irung Hewton. So I gave most of my comments on this one at the beginning, so I didn't have much to add, but I, I like the angle of organized crime because it allows for all the tools and the laws that we've got to be able to address this, rather than seeing it as some kind of a, as you say, not just natural, but some kind of a primitive mm -hmm. um, economic uh, com conflict strategy. So it's, a, it's really Use a tangled tissue that has got a myriad of, uh, you know, threads around it. Uh, even as you say, there's a cultural issue, there's a politics, people who are bankrolling and steamrolling this particular activity. But it seems the government cannot even pinpoint, without politicians spending or actually sharing the podium with the government. Yeah. Well, Some of them <laughs> who are well known, who are abundance of... They are, they're part of the scam. They are yeah, part, we are, of this, part of the scam. Part of this organized crime. You've heard so, of this... So uh, is it a difficulty from the government to actually lay a finger on the bandits themselves? No, no, they are the, well the government knows exactly what's going on. The government needs to act on it. Um, mm. the, bar, the internal security ministry knows um, what they had for breakfast. The intelligence system in this country, as my colleague here on the left knows, is uh, probably one of the most superb intelligence systems we have in the, in the region. Mm -hmm. It has been like that for a very long time, very well trained. And Debal, uh, I think that uh, corruption, which is at the core of our state, Debal, you know, not only is it corruption that's the core of our state, we have this narco state now. Because, you know, Debal, you know, it's not only cattle, cattle rustling, it's drugs, it's uh, mm. uh, all kinds of uh, uh, things now. And uh, Debal, the, ke the very idea of the Kenyan state uh, shaking in its boots <coughs> is, is no longer a foreign concept. You've heard of this quip that says uh, that nothing succeeds more like success. Mm. It's Alexander Dumas. People forget to say that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's very important for us to uh, make sure that uh, this uh, internal security minister, Mr. Kendiki, mm -hmm. who has been given, uh, uh, been told by the president to go and camp in, um, mm -hmm. in, in northern, uh, the Northern Rift, um, I think that the debal, that the rhetoric of um, Kenya Kwanzaa uh, from the beginning that the president was going to be a security president. If, 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 if people talked of uh, Mr. Odinga as a social transformer, as a person who would cha change person, uh, what we know is that President uh, Ruto is a security man and he doesn't brook any nonsense on those issues. So this is going to be a major test for him on the security file. 
That's because without the security file, Debal, we can't have an economic file. And you know, Debal, that the, yesterday in Valentine's, people are not buying flowers because the, the economy is in the... Is in, in the doldrums. In the out, outhouse, if I can use a Canadian word. It's in the outhouse. And Debal, it's, uh, uh, and it's appalling that uh, our country uh, is um, nearly bankrupt. There's no money. And um, the, the people are suffering. And to add this insecurity of uh, livestock is going to be compounded because the bomb, uh, the people there need uh, something to eat. They need shelter. They need something. And they don't care where that money comes from, the ball at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, when someone is desperate, um, all kinds of ethics, you know, fly, flies out of the window. Mm. The best social policy, the ball is a job. And if these fellows had a job, uh, we would not have this kind of insecurity. Right. Mm. Let's finalize it. I, I, like, I, I like Matt Bryden's uh, angle of criminalization, which also was uh, taken by Irungu. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's really the core of this. <coughs> uh, Excuse uh, really the core of this debate. Uh, the, the nomenclature of a bad tree and all that mm. is, is, is sassy for, for some of us who are in sort of anthropology and, and other areas of that mm. analysis. But for me, uh, it, it's the the thesis of the criminalization mm. of the state by uh, Stephen Ellis and others, mm. uh, you know, the French scholars and so on, the criminalization of the state. Mm. But in the Kenyan sense, it is not the criminalization of the state, it's the criminalization of religion. Yeah. True. Uh, not the state, because mm. you cannot use that as that. The criminalization of religion. And, and, and we, we started off very well, uh, very badly, sorry. Uh, with the, north, north, the so-called Northern Frontier District mm -hmm. uh, in the 1960s and 70s, the criminalization of the region. Mm -hmm. Closed uh, district. And, 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 and you know, uh, the Shifter War, uh, Shifter is the same as banditry, was not really a, sh a Shifter War. It was a, uh, it was a very serious uh, war within a region in Kenya. It was a civil war. Yeah, it was more of a civil war uh, than anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, we need to get deeper into uh, the analysis of Northern Kenya from a political economy point of yeah. view. And the political economy uh, approach here will s explain why the government is incapable of dealing with this uh, so-called banditry. Why is it unable? Because the commanders of these, uh, uh, of these wars are actually political leaders. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have been trying to say. Uh, and whenever you basically uh, arrest them or uh, deal with them, you are actually dealing with the entire political establishment yes. in that area. In, in mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, we need, uh, we, we need more sharper, you know, instruments of, the, of analysis of this issue, mm -hmm. uh, pro problem uh, than just dealing with it as a security issue. It's a, it's a political economy issue. Uh, when you go to Baringo, uh, do a quick analysis of Baringo at the beginning of uh, last of, of uh, last year mm -hmm. when Ruto went there and uh, Uhuru was commenting on it and it became part and parcel of the, uh, the, 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 the um, Kenya, of that time Kenya Kwanza and Azimio mm -hmm. kind of company. <coughs> uh, what me. happened? Uh, some people were arrested. And they 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 are actually the political leaders. Right. It is very clear that some people are elected on the platform of promoting banditry. Mm. What do you expect them to do when they're in power? It is also impo important to know that some people lost power because they were not actively involved mm. in the banditry. They, 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 they were actually not giving the leadership that is uh, uh, mm. I think Kenya need to confront this, and I'm speaking as a, as a person who has uh, been involved in f uh, f uh, research mm. uh, from 2000. I'm from 1999. Mm -hmm. I've walked to Kainuk. I've moved to, you know, uh, uh, Kerio, uh, um, uh, Kerio Valley. The entire mm -hmm. of Kerio Valley. Uh, and what you find there is a very complex situation where leadership is about promoting the interest of the community and the interest of communities and irating the other community and taking their cattle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is a very brutal uh, process mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with in more complex way than just deploying KDF mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, and, and other forces. Is that the thought that came to me very quickly, just as, as you were raising that, we would not call um, sex trafficking, mm. drug smuggling, mm. wash wash, mm. tenderpreneur, mm. um, procurement frauds, traditional or customary. Yes. Hopefully. Yeah, I, mean, I do worry about the rate of corruption in this country that at some point we are going to start arguing 
that it is almost genetically modified. So I, I think there is something here about you know the way that we are dealing with um, banditry that actually prevents us from getting at this problem head on. Yes. Right. Mm. We are due for a station break uh, right now. When we circle back, could we just wind up on the topic with uh, the idea? Because now the, there was a resumption of, of parliament yesterday. People are debating how could the president deploy uh, KDF without the approval of uh, pa parliament. So did he jump gun in terms of deployment of uh, the KDF because this was not given the green lighting uh, by parliament according to the constitution. constitution so there was a violation of constitution yep. as it is. We take a short break when we circle back. Delve deeper. <laughs>